Hi, welcome to Spark Stories, a monthly program where we find out about the spark that inspired area leaders to step up and enact change to make Des Moines a better place to live. Siobhan Spain is the director of Mainframe Studios, which is slated to be the largest nonprofit art studio building in the nation. Mainframe Studios is ensuring artists are never priced out of Des Moines, Iowa. Shaban has over 20 years experience in arts administration, including managing Site Santa Fe, the studio office of MacArthur Fellow Tom Joyce, and Mary Goldman Gallery. She has served in committee and board roles for Center for Commun or the Contemporary Arts Santa Fe, Santa Monica Museum of Art, the Des Moines Art Center, Des Moines Public Art Foundation, Los Angeles Times Foundation, and Women Food and Agriculture Network. Shaban will share her spark story or what motivates her to make a difference and what she reads to stay inspired. Welcome, Shaban. Thank you so much for being here today. Fantastic being here. Thanks for the invitation. Um, can you tell us more about Mainframe Studios for people in the audience who have never been there? It is an amazing building downtown and we'll show some pictures here on the screen, but can you tell us about it? Yes, you know, I actually printed out some some images because I'm such a visual person and I represent a lot of visual artists um, that it's hard to tell a story without the visuals, I think, especially when talking about art. Um, but we are a nonprofit uh, that provides permanent affordable workspace for artists of all disciplines. Um, we own our building at 900 Kiaway in downtown Des Moines, so in the heart of the city. Um, and we're almost done. So the fundraising that we do for the organization basically allowed us to purchase the building. And then we're still in a capital campaign to build those floors in, out and renovate them into um, really great workspaces for creatives of all, all types of disciplines. So we have four of our five floors done. Our building is 160,000 square feet. I mean, that's big. And so even without being finished, we already have 131 studios. And you know, those studios are shared. So we probably serve about 180 creatives in downtown Des Moines. And we have a wait list that's really long. So that tells you how much talent is in this city. That's amazing. And people can come and see Mainframe Studios once a month, right? The yes, public. so we, we do have um, open hours because, you know, we have photographers that have clients. We have painting classes that go on. Um, we have events here in our event space. Um, we have dance classes um, that our tenants are all um, creating on their own volition. But our programming, so Mainframe Studios hosts an open studio event once a month that is free and open to the public and usually has a theme that's exciting. Um, so that's every first Friday of the month from 5 to 8 p.m. Um, it's really a great time to experience Mainframe in its fullest capabilities because most artists are here. We provide entertainment, we provide a menu and drinks so people can really make a night of it. And I love the fact that families come and that's exciting for me to see in every walk of life too. I love that power that art brings people together and is such a great connection point for communication and connection. And so what specific experience brought you to this point of being becoming the director of this, uh, this nonprofit studio in Des Moines? Um, how did you get here? Yeah, so I grew up in a family full of artists and farmers. And those two um, kind of uh, people are very resourceful in a lot of ways. They are connected to the earth and they want to be resourceful and save money and make things better out of nothing. Um, but I grew up in a family of seven kids total. And my parents were teachers in earth science and art. And they were both artists themselves. So I thought, okay, you know, it's gonna be art for me too. So. Anyway, I went to school thinking I was going to get an art degree. Um, 
And then I um, had a teacher's assistant in one class have me draw my shoe. And I just, it was a funny like light bulb that came on like, hmm, I wonder if this is the best use of my, my time and my resources. So I actually ended up switching to a business degree. So I realized I kept my art history for my sanity. I went to University of Iowa and at the time of having a business and art degree did not happen. And people thought, what the heck am I gonna do with those two degrees? So it really served me ever since. Um, I, I loved having a foot in both worlds. And then I have went on to represent individual artists um, in many capacities in Santa Fe and Los Angeles. And then my family's from here, so I moved back. Um, I inherited my family farm with my siblings. And so that kind of brought me back and I imported my husband here, who's also into the arts. Um, but I connected with the founder of Mainframe Studios right away. Um, so Justin Mandelbaum had this vision for Mainframe Studios and he was doing a lot of work to prove that there's enough artists in Des Moines to fill a building up this size. He didn't have the building picked out or anything, but I kind of followed him along the way. We, he moved from the West East Coast, um, about the same time I moved from the West East Coast, West Coast, <laughs> sorry, East West. Um, and we realized we lived about 10 miles from each other living up and growing up. So he's not an artist but he's a real estate developer and he just knows what the arts can do for a community. And a couple of years later, I, would, I left, a, we had coffee and, and I called my husband. I'm like, I think I just had a job interview. And sure enough, um, it was really awesome that, uh, cause I actually didn't think I'd have an art career in Des Moines. It just, you know, the, the climate wasn't big enough um for that to happen and I was really into agriculture too so that's why I was on the board of women food and agriculture network because it's amazing and um really helpful to us so anyway um sure enough he had an eye on the building he's like as soon as we secure it I want you to make it happen so that's what happened that was about seven years ago now um so we were all about um building occupying this building, getting fundraising to it, get it um, in place and really create a new model for other cities to um, replicate. You know, the whole idea is to, you know, like the art center, Des Moines Performing Arts, the sculpture park, every city needs a mainframe studios where artists, infrastructure for individual artists and creatives, however you want to call them, you know, um, there's a place for them in the heart of our city because they give our city so much on a daily basis. So if you think about it, they're not here seasonally. They're not here for a show that comes through town. They're here every day. So like right now, and we're, our building's 24 seven for a reason because they're active. <laughs> That is such a great story. I love that it came from just a personal connection, you know, like a connection between two people who had a vision and shared interests. And yes. it just became this amazing, amazing thing in Des Moines um, and for the nation, really, because it's the biggest, it, it should be the biggest nonprofit in, in the nation once it's completed. Is that right? Yeah, there's no one like ours. And I think, um, you know, I've, I've been following news articles about artists getting priced out across the nation, you know, and, and the biggest one is New York City, you know, it's, that's the center of the art world is New York City. And if artists can't afford to live there and work there, what does that mean? I mean, they're losing their mojo. And then, you know, it has trickled out to Austin, and Richmond, Virginia, and San Francisco and Los Angeles and Santa Fe, you know, so they've had to move, constantly move because they constantly get priced out. And so we just wanted to stop that story. It's, you know, we, we put artists in crappy old buildings and then we price them out of them. And like, let's give them a building that's beautiful and made for them and really values their commitment to our community and helps us see things differently and connect in different ways. I think it's a beautiful thing. And I've been proved over and over and over how true it is. Part of your vision is, is that same vision as just, Justin, um, mm -hmm. making sure artists aren't priced out of Des Moines. Do you have another uh, 
anything to add to that for what you want to see in Des Moines in the future with arts? Well, I think we still have a long ways to go. You know, you can give them a beautiful place and have connections. um, But we really, I want to see more. You know, I, I, I want, I see what they're doing for a community. And I'm like, I've always said since there needs to be more agents for artists, you know, those liaisons, kind of like um, gallery owners, um, nonprofit directors like me. Um, but we need to get them integrated in the community even more and recognizing that they can be at the table um, at business meetings. They're business owners. They, they're CEOs of their own life and career. And I think that we need to recognize that. So some people are like, oh, we don't want artists to be all business savvy. They should be doing their work. And yes, there's some like that, that choose that to be uh, a recluse and just hide away and do the work and have different reasons for doing work and different outlets. But um, even then, I think we're missing out on including them in the conversation and really seeing them as who they are. There's a stereotype that's been just forever in our minds about how they need less, they're they're just playing around, they're, you know, isn't that nice they get to do what they want, you know, that sort of thing. And I I think if we just turn that um, assumption on its head and start reaching out to them and asking the same questions we ask our business leaders, we'll be surprised at how much they know and how much they want to give back to the community and be involved. And um, so it's all about the artists and supporting the artists and the art and their vision and helping to integrate them into the community and really develop the city as a better place for everybody to live, you know, that values the arts. So um, as you're creating this, this new kind of thing, um, can you talk about what helps you stay inspired, the books you read, anything that kind of keeps you going or in your life too, not just in your work, but. Yeah. I mean, I love the, I love that we get to talk about books. That's fun. Um, because they are such a great resource. I think like artists, books help us connect to the greater world and just um, challenge our perspective and educate our um, lives and interactions and how we go about um, our lives. So I do think that, you know, just to touch on another thing that I want to do in Des Moines, is just, you know, we're, we're known for appreciating the arts, but I want to be known for producing art. You know, being a a production city is really important to really engage. There's so many capabilities that our artists are able to do, whether it's, um, you know, a lot of the movement right now is that social engagement art. So artists that want to really better their community by doing outreach. So mentorship programs, um, bringing in um, a different you know, make sure black books are represented in libraries and that um, artists of color know where and community of color know where to find and read about people like them. Um, Like Cameron Gray's doing that up in Ames and Jill Wells is doing the AXA program um, mentoring and it's, it's valuable stuff. And I just, um, anyway, can't, can't praise them enough. Um, Anyway. Yeah, artists are where it's at. And I've really been glad that my career has been able to represent artists because, you know, they, somebody needs to be able to do the business side of things. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to hold up some visuals and then books. Okay. So I just wanted to show, cause we, we got a facelift. <laughs> this year well last year now and this is uh what we look like now yes it's and striking. i can share my <laughs> screen but i'm kind of a tactile person yeah that's funny. and it used to be um uh, a building for mainframe computers so not a lot of windows and not conditioned for artists 
or people in any means. So we cut in a ton of windows. And I love this, I love this photo for the sake of, you know, I, I was officing out of this abandoned building while we fundraised for like two years. Um, and to be in this like concrete, vast, um, vacant building, and then be a witness of these windows going in. And I thought it was just so metaphoric. Like we are opening these windows that have never been there. And what it's like looking through, what's that view looking through there? It's a whole new, it's never been seen before. And I think, you know, artists um, and books do that for us, like I mentioned. And I just love that we, we are doing that in knowing that that's how it works and we need to do it more. And I wanted to show this one too, because this is an artist in the studio and that's Fuchi Vang who works at the public library. And look at that beautiful, amazing art. Okay, if he wasn't in mainframe, would you know he did that? No, like now everybody's learning like what a gift he has and what a gift he is in Des Moines. Um, and he will he will be starting um, an arts uh, series here at the Des Moines Public Library um, on Tuesdays for or Mondays, third week and Monday to come in and learn some drawing skills. So that starts next month. Um, yeah. Or this I month, know. I think once this airs, it'll yeah, be once this, this month. Airs, you're right. Yeah. So look for that. <laughs> He's so fantastic. I just love this is a book. He drew my daughter. Wow. Yeah love it um and then you know it's a place to gather and first friday is just it's fun we have a very vibrant um energetic space here this was one of our most recent ones look at that wow. beautiful look at that these are uh luchadores by miriam Alarcon. um mm -hmm. and then deshara did wreath on the runway and we just had a packed house and that's what I'm about that's why I do what I do to make those things happen and it's just beautiful and it's fun to see people's experience like they're just like what did I come across this is happening in Des Moines and it's like look all these people here and they're beautiful and then we invite artists in so this is an author she's um a graphic novelist well she does comics um and she is the author of one of my daughter's favorite books because she's really into graphic novels and it is i was their american dream um i'm going to show you that by um malaka garib i'm so bad at pronunciations but um she came and spoke um so she's on npr and new yorker and and she just has stories to tell um and I love her book. And I love that I really got something out of it. My daughter who's 10 rereads it over and over again. I think she just uh, loves looking at how it's drawn, what life was like for her growing up, being like having a foot in two countries and, and families from two countries. Um, so when I, you know, we have a lot of required reading growing up. And when I started um, choosing my own books, it wasn't a surprise that I was attracted to writers um, that were kind of alternative or talking about strange things because I easily identify with those type of people when I was drawn to it, um, since I'm drawn to artists. So like Albert Camus, The Stranger, mm -hmm. The Fountainhead was one of my first books that I like. That was my, I chose to read it. Um, you know, Burkowski and, you know, the beat writers and all those. So that was really turning point for me to just, I, I grew up in a farm in Iowa and never really traveled and here are these books that were taking me places and teaching me how there is so many different ways of living and i love that i love and i lo love that that's what i loved about la you know and we lived kind of on the east side and 
I was just able to witness all these different ways of living and I appreciated all of them. I don't like living in a little bubble of my own making. I, I like information um, from lots of different avenues. So my when I met my husband, he was really into graphic novels and um, Persepolis, of course, is just um, kind of like the peak of graphic novels and what they can do. Um, and I love, again, how they're really inclusive. Like it doesn't matter whether you're young or old or, or what stage of life you're in to be able to pick that up and just have a visual aspect that goes along with reading is really fun sometimes to take a break and um, literally be in somebody else's you know, eyes. Mm -hmm. But I also have really loved um, biographies on artists. Um, so like Sally Mann's Hold Still. She is such a good writer. And her stories are just for why she does the art she does. And you get such a personal perspective of what she was going through when she created the photographs she did. And then like Patti Smith, Just Kids with Robert Maplethorpe in New York City. Um, just fantastic writing. Uh, I just love those. So I, I really were drawn to them and they were pretty pivotal. And I think um, art books in general are really great. My husband gave me this one, which I highly recommend, which is the artist project. So it's what artists see when they look at art. So I just picked, you know, I opened it up to a random, random um, page and Carrie James Marshall was talking about this um, image by Ingra. And um, I love seeing what he sees. I mean, it's so informative. We can learn so much from how an artist sees the world. So he thinks it's an ultra modern piece. Like, would you assume that? But then he delves, in, delves into why, because like the tonality was not done that way at that time. The black background that has nothing in it. And his conclusion to all that is like, it's not something that just happened. I don't think anything is more important than having options. This is where I think the expression of true freedom exists. He got that from that painting. And I think it's just so moving. Those words are so, you know, he's very well-versed in so many trades, Carrie James Marshall. And um, it's very respected artist. And just in those few words, he said so much. And so I, I love art books for that reason. A new one that came out, I don't know if you've seen this one and if the, the library has it, but I highly recommend it. The Ultimate Art Museum. It is curated by, um, Farron Gibson, who is a black artist and curator. And so it takes you through, you know, different museums and fields of art. And it's really fun again for any age at all. And then um, I'm also reading about art from artists. So Amy Silman, faux pas, really awesome book. It's essays. It's like the shape of shape. Now that sounds really silly. Like what could you, you just said it all. But I think that she really, you know, try in her work, she traverses hierarchies in art history by just making it may what be making about what could be preserved as really rudimentary aspects of shape and color. But she finds a way to really dig in. And if you take time to, to experience the little things, it's very thought provoking. It's very self, um, it raises your own self-awareness of where you are in the world, just about shape and color. Anyway, I'm, I'm constantly fascinated by what artists can do for our lives and how they view the world and are constantly like, the reason I love them is like, they get up and there's not enough time in the day, you know, to um, explore the relationship that they have with the world and making their mark on it. I mean, artists at their peak really function like that. And it's really fun to be around. 
Thank you so much uh, for sharing that great list of books to get people, uh, you know, reading some art books and graphic novels. That's such a great recommendation. If you haven't read uh, much in graphic novels, it's amazing what they can do. Um, in, in pictures. So um, I will check our, our library and see which ones we don't have and make sure we get those. So thank yeah. you very much for sharing that list. Um, is there anything else you want to share? Um, I just want to open invitation every first Friday of the month, come down and experience art and get to know our artists. So we have, you know, if the door is open, go in, talk to them make a connection, maybe do a collaboration um, with them. There's classes, there's um, workshops, there's art kits, there's art supply store, there's a recording studio, there's radio station, there's a dance studio. So, I mean, the options are endless. And Thank you. I appreciate being your guest. Thank you for doing what you're doing. Thank you. Um, yes, I highly recommend uh, attending First Fridays. It's a lot of fun. So. Thank right. you so much for being here today, Siobhan. Yeah. And um, I, I hope everyone enjoyed hearing your story. And uh, if you wanna look at our other Spark stories or learn more, check out the Des Moines Public Library's website, our YouTube channel, those are all listed in our archives. So thank you again for being with us today and have a great rest of your month. <laughs>